Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be reviewing and testing a new ultra long range VTX from AKK. This is the TX5000AC, a 5 watt analog VTX for ground vehicles and FPV. In this video I'm going to be taking you through all of the specs and features of this VTX on the bench and then we're going to be running it through my VTX power output testing setup and we can check its power output across all of the low race and race band channels as well as all of the different power settings that this VTX supports and there are a few surprises that you definitely want to be aware of. Let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. If at any point during this video you want to learn more or pick up one of these VTXs for yourself all the links you need are down in the video description and all of those links help support the channel and won't cost you anything. So please do use them if you possibly can. Alrighty, let's take a look at this VTX on the bench. And when you open the box, the VTX is front and center. And I think this is the smallest and lightest five watt analog VTX that I've ever held. And I'm gonna get some measurements for you. It is 36 millimeters by 36 millimeters by 14 millimeters tall, including the heat sink and fan. The fan is integral and doesn't sit proud of the heat sink, so that's quite a nice design. If we flip the VTX over, you can see that there's a label on the bottom, AKK, ultra long range, TX5000 AC. And we also have some labeling for the pins of the plug. This VTX will accept 14.6 to 28 volts input, so that's for five or 6S battery voltage only. Um, if you go too much higher than 6S, you're gonna exceed that 28 volts input voltage um, when the battery's fully charged. We then have a ground pin. This VTX supports smart audio, and it has a five volt output to power a camera up to 500 milliamps. In terms of connections, we've got an MMCX connector for the antenna and a button here to select between channel band and power. To show which channel band and power you're on, we have a whole array of LEDs on the side and there is an instruction manual provided with the product to tell you what all those LEDs mean, but um, it does use like different codes. So you're gonna to need to uh, have a look at that if you want to control the VTX using the button. But to be honest, I think if you use this guy, you're going to want to be controlling it over smart audio because that gives you access to um, changing the channel band and power through beta flight. And it also lets you use frequencies that aren't in the uh, pre-programmed VTX tables. Inside the box, we get some additional accessories, an MMCX to SMA adapter, a plug for the VTX, including this little heat shrink wrapped uh, component on the wire. We're going to take a look at that and a little instruction manual to tell you how to use the VTX, what all the LEDs mean, and what the internally programmed channels and bands are. Let's take a look now at this little component that's on the power cable of the VTX plug. And I'm just gonna cut the heat shrink away so that we can have a look at what's inside. And inside the heat shrink, we have a little PCB with a surface mount inductor on it. And I think this is just to clean up the power supply input to the VTX. Obviously, they're assuming that you're going to be running it directly off of battery voltage. And they want to make sure that that uh, power supply is as clean as possible. So now that we've looked over this VTX on the bench, it's time to test its output power and see if it lives up to the 5 watt claim. Let me take you quickly through my VTX power test setup. So I have the AKK 5 watt VTX here connected to an ADL 5902 true RMS RF power meter through its included MMCX to SMA adapter cable and 40 decibels of RF attenuators. This ADL 5902 converts the RF power at its input into an analog voltage signal that's proportional to the RF power in decibel milliwatts. And that's measured by the Arduino and displayed on the screen. I can take this signal and run it through a calibration curve that's depend on the frequency this VTX is outputting to convert that signal back into the output power of the VTX in milliwatts. The VTX is powered by this plug here. I'm gonna be powering it at 15 volts. And the VTX is also connected to this flight controller over smart audio so that I can change the channel band and power without touching the setup and potentially disturbing any of these connections here. So we get a nice consistent setup for measuring output power across all the different channels and bands. Normally when running a bench test like this, I would be concerned about the VTX getting too hot. But in this case, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. 
This little fan really is going and blowing some air across this heatsink, and that's gonna help keep the VTX cool during the testing. So now that you've seen how the data is collected, let's take a look at it. So here we have the VTX output power test results for the AKK TX5000 AC. And I tested from low race one, which is just around 53, 50 megahertz, all the way up to race band eight, which is just above 5,900 megahertz. The channels are evenly spaced across that whole range. And I tested all of the different output powers that the VTX supports, which is from 25 all the way up to 5,000 milliwatts. On the 25 milliwatt setting, I found the VTX actually delivered a little bit less than 25 milliwatts output, anywhere between eight and 19 milliwatts on that setting, depending on the channel that it was set to. I don't know how important this is because this VTX isn't really intended for racing pilots. Racing pilots typically want to have exactly 25 milliwatts of conducted output power on the 25 milliwatt setting to make sure they get the cleanest video that they can whilst not blasting other pilots out of the sky. On the five watt setting, the VTX does really quite well, anywhere from 3.6 to as much as 7.5 watts, depending on which channel you have it set to, with the peak output coming around race band three. The three watt and one watt setting are very, very similar. So you get the same sort of shape of curve, just offset a bit. Again, the three watt setting is delivering about 3.5 watts at its absolute maximum, but anywhere from you know, 1.4 watts up to 3.5 watts, depending on what channel it's set to. The one watt setting is anywhere from 880 milliwatts up to about 2.25 watts. This is something to be aware of. This VTX is delivering more than one watt of conducted output power, even on the one watt setting. So if you are keen to stay compliant with regulations that say you have to be under one watt of conducted output power, the one watt setting is actually still a bit too high for that. Where this gets really interesting is in the intermediate settings, 200 and 500 milliwatts. These have a huge amount of variation depending on which channel you have the VTX set to. And bizarrely, the 500 milliwatt setting actually delivers less than the 200 milliwatt setting on low race five. And I double, triple check this um, because it's such a strange result. All I can think is that the 25 milliwatt, 1000, 3000 and 5000 settings have all been tuned in some way, calibrated. But the 200 and 500 milliwatt settings don't appear to have been. And so we're seeing this large hump here. Um, I have seen this with other VTXs um, in both in retail production samples and also pre-production. And in general, this just means that the, the VTX power output table for those frequencies hasn't been tuned. Perhaps this variation output power here is something that AKK could look into, see if they can replicate that on other samples. And if they can, maybe just tune that power table um, for those intermediate power settings, just so that they are more consistent with the shapes of the curve that we're getting on the, on the other settings, which are pretty reasonable. So now that we've looked at the VTX output power test results, it's time to talk through the pros and cons of this VTX as I see them, starting with the positives. The form factor of this VTX is fantastic. It is, I think, the smallest and lightest 5 watt analog VTX that I've ever seen. And the 30 by 30 mounting holes make it really easy to fit in the back of any five or seven inch drone for flying long range. The included fan does a fantastic job of keeping the VTX cool, even at the maximum output power and just sitting on the bench with no other airflow, the VTX stayed nice and cool and didn't overheat. I really like that AKK have included a little inductor, a little choke here on the power input, just means that they're thinking about making sure that the power input to this VTX is as clean as possible. And it's just gonna help make sure that the video that you get is as clean as possible. Particularly on bigger quads with bigger motors, the amount of electrical noise on the battery voltage, which is probably where you're gonna be powering this VTX from, can get quite significant. So it's good to see that little choke. Now time to talk about, I guess, the areas for improvement or things that I could find to criticize. In terms of the battery voltage input, 14.6 to 28 volts is actually a bit limiting. That's only five or six S battery voltage. I would have really liked to have seen support down to maybe 12 volts and as high as maybe 36 volts. So we're covering four to eight S, which is I think the range of battery voltages that people are likely to use with a VTX like this. 14.6 to 28, just a little bit limiting for me. In terms of the VTX output power, 
The 200 and 500 milliwatt settings, as we saw, are a little bit inconsistent. They're not properly tuned or calibrated, at least on the sample that I have. I'd really like to see them tuned, and so they have a nice consistent output power similar to the other power settings. I'd like to see a little bit more power output on 25 milliwatts. I think that was a little bit low. I'd like to bring that up a little bit. And I'd like to see a little bit less power output on the one watt setting so that if you're flying in the US, you can use that one watt setting and be confident that you're not outputting more than one watt of conducted output power. Just make sure that you're going to be compliant with uh, the regulations that you need to be in terms of that maximum output power. So with all that said and done, who is the AKK 5 watt VTX right for? Well, I think if you're looking for a small and lightweight analog VTX with a really effective integrated cooling solution, and you live somewhere where you can take advantage of the 1 watt, 3 watt, and 5 watt output powers that this VTX provides, then I think you're going to be really, really pleased with it. The form factor is great. It's really easy to mount in a drone or on an RC vehicle, and it's small, lightweight, stays cool. If this sounds like you and you want to pick up an AKK ultra long range 5 watt VTX for yourself, then I've put some links to where you can get it down in the video description. And they are affiliate links, which means that if you click through, you will be helping support the channel and it won't cost you anything. So please do try to use those links if you possibly can. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.